Hello and welcome. This is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And in today's week two of the week view scheduler training, we have four different features I want to show you. And the first of which is an email created automatically on the scheduling an appointment. The next is the automatic scheduling of appointment reminders, which uh, creates multiple emails. We also have the ability to uh, view past appointments in a different color. And so we're going to show you that as well as multiple email templates in a very unique and unseen before uh, tab view in which I'm going to show you today where we can create multiple email templates based on uh, specific tabs that are cell based. So I'm really excited to show you all these new features. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. I'm really happy to show you week two of the week view scheduler. In the past week, we had created a week view scheduler where we had the ability to schedule various appointments based on a duration, uh, based on a, any information that we entered here. And we've added additional features to it, and those features are really important for scheduling. I wanted to show you those features. Uh, so what I've done is uh, added additional to this scheduler and let's go over those features what I have done. First of which I have added a contacts sheet here and the contact sheet includes the contact name, address, city, state, zip code, the email address, uh, when a scheduled appointment takes place and if there was a reminder sent. Now what I want to do is I want to create emails based on certain events that happen. One, I want to create an email when we schedule an appointment and when we schedule a specific contact from our list, I want an email to be created based on that and I want that email to be dynamic. I want it to include the scheduled date, the scheduled time in both the subject and in the message and I want their name to appear within that email and I may want to add some sort of an attachment like let's say a picture or something uh, so we can do that as for directions for map or anything you may want to do and I also want to the ability to create uh, appointment reminders that can be sent out uh, on the click of a button or perhaps on a scheduled uh, opening and I want to be able to do that simply by clicking a button and creating appointments that let the uh, contact know that, that their appointment is coming up and this as well may uh, create a different types of templates as well so to do that we've added some few few features and let's go over that and as well I have added an email templates sheet where we have up to one two three four five different email templates and we have an awesome tab feature now if you remember correctly um, back uh, many many months ago we had a tab feature that was really really popular let me go ahead and pull that up so I can show that to you and show you the different uh, types of it was called horizontal tabs and if you'll see here we had tabs that were based on shapes and if you have not seen that I will make the link available to you in the description it's also on YouTube and Facebook and basically in this instance we had uh, basically showing and hiding multiple columns based on the tab selection and this is a really cool feature but it took a little bit of time to create as well as getting the shapes right now in this particular we have something similar but it's actually quite different and it's not as pretty but it is a lot easier to create and in this particular all we were doing is using a cell base these are actually cells and we're hiding and showing different rows based on whatever tab we collect and then we're using conditional format and I'll go over how we did that as well so that's a really really great and very easy way to show a lot of data and if we expand that you'll go ahead and see how it's been done and we'll go ahead and unhide those rows and you'll see basically we have all of the different uh, email templates here we have an attachment and all we are doing by selecting the tab is hiding specific rows and showing rows also and now take a look at this you see this little uh, let's call it a legend for our variables now this is fixed right but look if you'll see now you know we're hiding rows so if you'll notice the little trick we did all I did was repeat these names in exactly the same place on each on each row so let's go ahead and look at that unhide this again now look at this I've just repeated it each time so regardless 
of what row section we're displaying, it's going to show this. Now this gives us the appearance that this table is not moving. And that's a really, really cool trick that we can use when we want to show something is fixed. We could use a shape, um, but in this case, I wanted to show a cell based and how we can do that. So that's really, and also if you look here, we do have a browse button and this browse button allows us to attach uh, any type of file. So if we were going to attach a, let's just say a PDF, right? We could click OK. And you'll notice that we only need one button. We only need one button here. And I'll show you that little trick too. How did we get away? And, he, and we only use one macro. We only use one button. You see there's just one button, right? None of these others have buttons. So we're using one button and one macro. But because we know what line has been selected, we know where to put it, right? So if that means if we have, let's say we have the fourth one, email template four, right? We actually have an attachment there and there. Okay, here, email, we have none, we do not have an attachment there. So if we click browse and we enter some type of uh, file, we automatically have it. And you see now it knows which attachment to go into. So if we unhide those rows here, we look at the fourth one and we see that spam, uh, that spam uh, picture there showing up in the correct place. And I'll show you how we did that. Um, and as well as we have two different scenarios in which we send out emails. We have one when we create a new appointment and uh, when we, as soon as we select the contact, a new email is going to be created. And we also have another one where we're going to be reminding. And if you'll notice, we have, let's go ahead and put this under new appointment, okay? And so here, look, we have added these two drop-down lists to the schedule. This wasn't here last week. Where we have the ability to select from any one of the five email templates for a new appointment. We also have the ability to select any one of the reminders. So let's say we wanted to use a different email template for reminder. We have made that drop down variable. That drop down, if you highlight these rows, I've created a named range. Look at that named range. It's right here. Into formulas, name manager. And if we click on named ranges here and we see our email templates and we tab over, we see that it's it's highlighting E3 through I3. So that means that no matter whatever changes we change, it's going to automatically be effective. So when we go back to the schedule, we select these two holding the control into the data, data validation, we see email templates. Okay, So that's all we have to do. And it's going to go right back to where we have highlighted them. So that means if we decide we want to change an email template name, let's just call this uh, Monday Reminder. Maybe you want to send it on Monday, right? Like, and we say, hi. And then let's go ahead and put in their contact name. Contact name, right? Alt-Enter. We need to stay within that cell, so Alt-Enter. I hope you had a great weekend. We're going to send this on Monday, so we want to say, uh, thank you for scheduling your appointment. Okay. Alt enter again. We have scheduled it for, okay. And then we're going to enter appointment, appointment time. Let's go a P P T time. That's the same variables that we're going to be using on. Let's go on and then appointment date a P P T. Let's go ahead. A P P T. DT, okay, and then a period, alt enter once again, thanks so much, see you there, okay, and then another alt enter and Randy, okay, so now we've got our, we'll just go, we'll add a subject line, hi, and then we'll do contact name, okay, let's go ahead and, it's going to autofill, which is nice, so we don't have to, there we go, we'll just keep the subject, hi, your appointment, Reminder. Okay, so now we've got um, our appointment reminder email template set. So we've got it on Monday reminder. Now let's go back to the schedule and we'll go ahead and select that Monday reminder. Here it is. We just changed it. 
And now this appointment reminder I've set up to today is Sunday, May 6th. When I'm doing this recording, tomorrow is the May 7th. So what I want to do is I want to create a reminder for all these patients, all of these, let's say, contacts here, but I don't really want to send, I don't want to create all four emails. So it's only going to create the ones where this is empty. So you see, our scheduled appointments on 5-7, we've already sent that reminder. Let's go ahead and delete that because if it'll send the reminder based on because none has been sent yet. So let's go back to the schedule and we'll click send scheduled reminders and there we go. We just have one email that's been created. Hi, contact me. Oh, looks like I, I kind of messed this up. Let's take a look at why this didn't come up and uh, see what see what the issue was. All right, let's go ahead back into that and we'll say no. And um, let's go ahead into the email templates. Contact name. Okay, let's get that spelling right. Contact. Contact. Okay, fair enough. Now, back into the contact sheet. Let's go ahead and delete that because we just created the email. Back into the schedule and we'll send appointments. There we go. Now we've got it right. Now we want to make sure those variables are the right because those get replaced. And you've probably seen that in my past videos, but we're going to go over it one more time because it is so important. Now we have, hi, Alex Sampson. Hope you had a great weekend. Thank you. We have scheduled your appointment for 8.45 a.m. on Monday the 7th. Great. Thanks so much and see you there. And if you'll look on the May 7th, you will see Alex Sampson for one hour at 8.45 a.m. Awesome. So let's go in and see how we made all of this function. All right. We're going to be showing you four features today. One is the ability to schedule past appointments uh, that are in a different color than active. It is right now the time of recording. It is 4.09 p.m. Now, it just passed 4 o'clock, right? So that means if I refresh the schedule, this 4 o'clock is now in the past because it's now 4.09 p.m. here. So watch when I click this week, right? And now look at it. Now you see this has uh, in the past, so this has gone to gray. Anything in the future is a different color. So that's a really cool feature I wanted to show you. Uh, we're going to go over that feature. We're going to go over the ability to make those tabs. We're going to go over how to create an email automatically on um, a new appointment. And we are going to go over how to send appointment reminders based on the click of this button. And I just showed you a few times how we did that. All right. So let's go into VBA and uh, we'll show you how we did. One more feature I forgot to show you last week. Let's go ahead and show you that now. This date is based on a formula. Okay, and we didn't, I forgot to mention that last week, so I wanted to go over it this way. And we can automatically that. Now, if you'll remember, we have our week start date here in B3. And we have our, um, and we know our week end date is basically seven days from that. So D4 is our, is our, and uh, we actually we have V4 is our last date. Our last date is right here. Okay, V4. So we know those two dates. We could just as easily do D4 plus 7, that would be the same thing. There's many ways to do that. V4 or D4 plus 7. So all we're doing is texting. We're going to take the date of D4 and we're going to put it in whatever format we want. So if you want to change the format, you would just change it here. Let's say I only wanted a three-digit month. Let's say I was running out of space and I only wanted a three-digit month abbreviation. I would just click there and uh, May. May, my friends, only has three, so that's not going to help us. Let's go back into April. April, there we go. APR, that'll give us the three uh, digit abbreviation or the three letter abbreviation of the month. So that's going to be helpful when we want to shorten it up. So any format you change in this will automatically be changed. That's really, really helpful. I'm glad I, I got the opportunity to show that to you this week. Let's go ahead and go over the features that I just mentioned into the developers tab let's go ahead and get under the hood and see how we did this uh, you'll click on visual basic if you do not have the developers tab viewable you will want to go into file options and into the customized ribbon you want to make sure your developers tab is selected here you can also use the shortcut alt f11 to get into the vba and let's go ahead and take a look at some of the changes that we made. There's only a few changes that we made on sheet. 
And if you have not seen last week's uh, week view schedule, I urge you to view the video and download the application uh, before this one because we're going to build right off it and we're going right, right from that to this one. So we're building on last week's. And in this case, we made changes to the details. Now we made changes. Now that remember when we, let's go ahead and close this out. When we um, schedule an appointment now, right? When we add, we want something to happen. Now I want something additional. I want to create an email, but I want to create an email on a certain conditions. When we've made a change to this, and not any change, right? If I add, if I just add any text, I don't want to create an email because there's no contact with that name. But if I do select a contact from the drop down list, I want an email to be created. So that means we want some action to happen when we make a change to this column when we make a change now what is consistent with these columns they all have the details in the header okay they all have the text details that is row five they all have the word details this column doesn't have that this column doesn't have that but this one does so that is common okay so we're going to run that check we're going to say basically if the current column plus row five, excuse me, row five contains the word details, then perform some action. And so that's exactly what we've done on worksheet change. Remember, worksheet change is we actually have to make a change to some cell, as opposed to selection change, where we're actually just, all we're doing is selecting a cell. All we're doing is selecting, and then something will happen. So in this case here, we're saying if row 5 and the target column equals detail details and target column does not equal empty now this we went over last time it means there has to be some sort of a database connected to that and we did go over last time and then we this is this is basically adds the name to the database so that we can recall it we went over it last time this part is the new part here is the part the highlighted part in blue is the part that I've added so that's what we're going to do. We're saying if the target value does not equal empty, in other words, if the user has not actually deleted something or there's, there has to be some value in the cell, then I want to send an email for the newly scheduled appointment. Okay, that's what I want to do. So first of all, I want to make sure that uh, we are able to track what cell we're on. I need to know we're going to run this mod, we're going to run this macro here. But before we do, I need to know what cell we're working on. In other words, once we move off the module, I need to know if we made a change to cell L40, I want that, I want that detail right, um, let's go ahead and pull that up. I want that detail in B2, right? And then B2 would be under the email templates. I believe I put it there. B2, okay, so once again, that is the email templates are sheet 4 b2 sheet 4 b2 i want to make that the target address in other words i want to record the exact cell where the change was made we're going to need to use that cell in the macro so i want to know what cell we made the change with and in this case i45 so if we make a change so if i make a change here we are on l40 so if we add a contact here and an email gets created okay that means we made a change to L40. So if we look back in the email templates, we're going to see L40 here. So I need that information in B2. That's going to help us when we use the macro. Why do we need the cell address? Because I need to know what the date is and what the time. Right? I need to pull from the schedule. I need to know this because I need to know what time and I need to know what date. These two are important. Those two items are based on the cell, right? Those are basic. So the time is 8.30 and the date. Both of those items are very important to us because we need to send those information in the email. So I need to pull this time and I need to pull this date. And I can do that as long as I know what cell the change was made to. So that's why we need it. Let's go back into there. So we're going to put the target address. Address adds the address uh, of that target. And then we're going to run this macro. Send new appointment email. Let's go ahead and go into the module where that's hold, and we'll go through that. Under new appointment email, I've created a new module here, and it contains just one single 
uh, macro. We're going to move a little bit quicker on creating new emails because we have created emails in many videos before where I've gone a little bit slower. So we'll move a little bit faster on this because I have done it so many times before and uh, there's so much to show you in this video. I want to get to it before you fall asleep. Don't fall asleep. All right. So we're going to create both of these outlooks as objects. Okay. Outlook mail and the Outlook application in the mail where we need the email template row. I need to know what row the template is on, so we need to know what template and what row the contact is, so we've dimensioned those as long. And we're gonna search for the contact name. We need to know, we need to know where that, we need to find the contact here, and we need to know what row, it, what row it's under. So we're gonna, I'll show you how that's done. So we've dimensioned those as ranges, and I'll show you how. Uh, we have some strings, you know, for the contact name, message, and attachment email. So those are just strings. Then we have the appointment date as date and the appointment time as double. And this is a decimal. That's why we've used double there. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to, we need to find that contact. Basically, it's like match, you know, in a cell you use match. Well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do it in VBA, right? So if I'm looking for, let's say, let's say Mary Zingers, right? In VBA, right? And we want the row. In VBA, we want the row to this. We're going to use equals match, right? We're going to look up Mary. And we're going to look it up in contacts, right? I've created a uh, named range called contacts. And we're going to, we want an exact match. And that's going to give us 15, right? That's the 15th item down, correct? So I, that's one way to do that within, within VBA. But we're going to use the find feature in VBA because I want to show you how we can find, we need to find that row. How do we do that in VBA? And I'm going to go over that. We know how to do it through a formula in Excel, but let's, let's do that through VBA. And it's one of the most important things, so we're going to go over a little bit slower on that. The first thing we do is we set the contact name range. This has been um, dimensioned as a range here, sheet three range contact. Now, what is this contact? I just showed it to you, but let's go over it again. Okay, Contact, let's look at it. I've created a name range for contact, and it includes all the contact name. Okay, That's just a named range, just a normal. So we can define that in VBA simply by using the sheet name and using the actual we don't have to and this is nice because if the range changes right uh then all we need to do is keep we don't need to change the vba code which is really nice if we were to use something if we were to use something like e5 through e19 right every time we increased it we'd have to change it if we were going to use e5 through e19 we'd have to keep updating this and updating this so i love using named ranges in here because they don't require updating in the code which is really powerful next thing we know we need to know what email template row is going to be used for our new one and that's defined in sheet 1 b23 now let's take a look at that under sheet 1 uh, b23 here and all this is is a match and what I'm gonna do is the user sets which they set which uh, they want which template they want to use here and we have up to five templates so all we're going to do is run now we've already created a named range remember called email templates so now all we need to do is run a match to find which template was used is it one so we've used a match right here this is gonna get us the row, right? This is going to get us the, the number. So in this case, it's one. But I don't want just, I know it's going to be template one, right? You know, we have, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five templates. But I don't want just the template. I need to know what row it's on, right? If we select template two, I need to know that starts on row 14. If we select email three, I need to know that it starts on row 24. So that's based on a formula, right? So email one, four, email five, 44. And I've, and they're all basically 10 away. So if we have row four, starts on row four, starts on row 14, 24, 34, and 44. So I've separated them 10 rows apart. So basically what I need to know is I need to know the starting row because when we create that email, we need to know what attachment to use, we need to know what subject to use, and we need to use what, what message. So we need that starting row. And back into, uh, you'll see that 
that we have four, and we've done that based on a formula. So that means that if we change this, right, to appointment reminder number two, the second one, this formula is automatically going to change to 14. And we've done that through a formula, and I'll go ahead and show you that formula. Let's move that back to the first one. And the formula is basically this. Um, we're going to pull the match. This matches it, okay? And uh, what, so this gets us one, right? And what it's going to do is subtract one. So in this case, it's zero. Ten times zero is zero, plus four is four. If this is the second one, if, it's, if I've chosen the second one, this is going to be two. Okay? Two minus one is one. One times ten is ten plus four. So basically, this, uh, this formula simply allows us to convert one to four. Two to fourteen, three to twenty-four, and so on. So that's how we get the row, and, and that's really, really important. Let's go ahead and format that back to general. Uh, Excel often wants to bring it as times but we want, it as, we want it as general. So it's the same thing. I've used the same formula. So this tells us what row our email template's on, and we need to know that. So back into the VBA code, we've, we've signified our row into this variable, email template row, and that's going to help us moving forward. Next up, with sheet 4, remember we've saved the address in B2. Remember, so that's going to be the address, right? That is right here under the email templates, B2. So we know we need to save that, and that's going to be, uh, for now, it's going to be a string. So we've done that, the address. And the contact name, now what's the contact name? Is going to be sheet one, the selected address. Remember, that's basically sheet one of whatever address. So in this case, sheet one L40. This is sheet one, okay? L40. It's saying I need to know the contact name is here, right? L, uh, here we go. L40, right? So in this case, Jimmy Dean. So contact name is Jimmy Dean. That's why, remember, that's why we need that. Oh, forget. That's why we need the selected address so that we can pull things from it. First, we're going to pull the contact name. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this is actually a name. In other words, if we put in some, some other name, right? that's not in there, I don't want anything to happen. I just want it to exit. I don't want to try to get an email. I don't want to cause an error. I just want to exit. No email. Let, let them come in, you know. That, this gives you the ability to put in notes, like uh, appointment notes or meeting or whatever, right, or anything you want without an error coming up, without sending an email, so that users have the flexibility to say, okay, if it is a contact, send an email. If it's not a contact, if it's just some notes, just exit out. So I want to make sure that that's in my code. So first we have to find the contact. And we can do that using the find, the find. And to do that, all we need to do is we need to set another, set another range found. Basically, this is a range. And I've created a range called found contact name. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the range. Remember, this is all of our contacts right here. Remember right here, contact name is contacts. So here is all of our contacts here. Now we're going to use the find. We're going to find what are we going to find, the contact name. We want to find the values and whole. Okay, That's all we want to do. So it's very, very easy. So we're going to set this. Now we're going to say if the contact is nothing. In other words, if there if nothing was found, then just exit the sub. I don't want to continue. If that contact name is not found on the list, just exit. Right? We don't need to move forward. We're, there's no email to be sending. We'll just leave it. And that's exactly what's happening. So that is exactly when you put when you put something like like the word like in there. It's not in there. It just exit the sub. And, and that is the whole point of that back into the VBA editor we go and our next up is we can see that uh, we once it's found once it's found we can define the contact row we need to know the row that that contact is and we can see if it's uh, we're anything after this point we know it's found so the contact row is equal to the found contact and then the row so that's that is going to tell us the row that we found it so now we've defined the row and once we have the row, we can then define all the details that we need for that contact. We know that the email is going to be in column J and the contact row. We know the contact name is going to be an E in the contact row. So it's much, much easier. 
Uh, we know that the email is going to be in column J. We know the name is going to be in column E. So that's very, very helpful. And then moving forward, we remember the, the appointment date. Remember, I told you this was very important, and we were going to use it based on the selected address. Now, what is that? Let's go ahead and go over that again. We know our address here is L. L40, right? We know that, but we need to get May 8th. I must get May 8th. I've got to be able to send them the date of their appointment. And I know I know it's in row 4, so we got that covered. But it's also it's not in the current column, is it? It's not in the current column. It's one two columns over, right? It's really starting in column J. So I need to know the current cell address minus two columns. We could use offset, that's one way. And another way is just to simply get this column and subtract two. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get this column and I'm going to subtract two. And I know we're focused on row four. So that's just what we're going to do. The appointment date is sheet one, cells, we know it's row four, we know it's row four, um, sheet one, and it's this column, remember, the column of the address minus two. So that's all we're doing. We could use offset, but uh, in this case I wanted to show you something a little bit different. This is a little bit more uh, another way to do that. And so we're also taking the column of the current address, we're subtracting two. Now we have our row and we have our column, so we can get the appointment date. And the appointment time, we know the appointment time is in the exact row that we're on. So we need to know that row and then we need to, need to move two columns over to get that time. So we do that just through VBA code as well, right here. Under appointment time is, again, the current row, the current row, we have that, the select address row, and then we have the column, once again, the select address column minus two. That gives us our appointment time. Now we have both appointment time and the appointment date. Okay, so now we, what we also want to do is I want to uh, put in in the appointment time and date in there. I want to know when I want to put the scheduled appointment time right here. Okay. I want to know when their next scheduled appointment is and I want to put it in right in here because this is going to help us information. When we want to send a reminder, I want to send it one day before the scheduled appointment. And I need to know what that appointment date is. So, but the problem is we have a date. Right? We have a date and we have a time, but they're not together. Look how they're together here, but in, in here they're separate. We have the date here, right? we have the time here, but we need to put them together. Now, remember, if you'll remember, we spoke of a, dates and times are simply numbers in Excel. So if we enter today's date, right, 5, eight, uh, let's see, today's the 6. So if we enter 5, 6, right, that's the 6th of May, but if we go ahead and change that, to a number, you're going to see that it's 43. It's a whole number, 43226. Okay. Now, what about 8 a.m.? Let's go ahead and take a look at 8 a.m. 8 o'clock, okay, a.m. Okay, there, there's your time, and it's been formatted properly, automatically, by Excel. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, times are actually decimals. So if we go into this, we see that it's 0 0.33, 0 0.33. Times are simply um, whole numbers. Uh, excuse me, times are decimals, days are whole numbers. But if we add them together, right, equals this plus this, right, then we've got, right, 43222, 6.33. That is actually a date and time. But now if we format that as a current date and time, right, if we format that to a date and time, you're going to see that those have been combined. So let's go ahead into date. And I want both a date and a time, something like right here. And you'll see now we've got the 5, 16, 18, 8 a.m. You see how that works? So it basically, it's math. All we're doing is adding the date and adding the time together to get that. So we're going to do exactly that in VBA. And all we're going to do is I want to take this date, I want to take this time, uh, this time here, and I want to add them together. And I want to put that information right here. So, so you see here, uh, 5, 8, 8.30 a.m. I want to put them together just like here. So you see on the 8th, 8.30 a.m., and I want to put it right here in column K. So let's go ahead and do that through VBA. That means sheet 3, that's the context sheet, 
column K and the contact row equals appointment date plus appointment time. It's that simple. Here's the whole number. Here's the decimal. Adding those two together plus formatting the cell, formatting the cell for both date and time, right? That's important. You want to make sure those, the, that the cell is, is uh, formatted so that it shows both the date and the time. And then you have your date and the time. So that is how, that is the purpose of that. Now we've done both of those. And now what I want to do is if there was an appointment reminder, I want to clear that. I want to clear this cell here. So L plus the contact row, I want to make sure that's cleared. That'll help us send out reminders because if there is a reminder that's been sent, we won't send out reminders. So it's important to clear that. So all we've done here, L is clear the contents of the contact row. And now um, if I want to do, do a check, I want to make sure that if there is no email address, then we should exit the sub. Obviously, we cannot email if there's no email address. So we're basically we're saying if J and the contact row is empty, then exit the sub. So J and contact, if this value is empty, exit the sub. So we won't continue any further. Next up, we want to get the attachment, the subject, and the message. And we can do that, remember, using our email template row. Remember our email template row, we have defined all the way up here B23 value under sheet one, right? That is under the schedule B23 right here. Our, that tells us what template we're going to use. We have five different templates, right? All based on different rows. So we need to know which attachment, which uh, subject, and which message to use. We have many. So that is going to tell us which one to start off on. So we know that our attachments in F plus the email template row. We know that our subject is one row down from that. Um, so our subject is going to be the template row plus one. And our message is going to be the template row plus two, right? One is the four. This is going to be adding nothing to our template row, adding one and adding two to get us those three uh, variables so that we can use those within our email. Next up, I want to take our, I want to be able to customize that message. That means if I find contact name anywhere within the email, within the subject or the message, I want to replace us with the actual contact. If I find anywhere where it's going to say appointment time, I want to replace this with the actual appointment time. And likewise, anything with the appointment date, I want that replaced. So I want to do the same thing for both the message and the subject. We can do that through these two lines of code, simply replacing those three variables using multiple replace. Basically, we're starting with the subject, and we're saying anywhere you find this contact name, replace it with the actual contact name. Anywhere that you find appointment date, like this, replace it with the actual appointment date. But not only replace it with the date, I want you to format it like this. Okay, So we're giving the format, the long days plus the month. You can format it any which way you want simply by making changes to this format. And so also, if there's an appointment time, I want you to replace it with the appointment time. But not only that, I want you to uh, format that specific time with hours, uh, minutes, and then AM, PM. You can format yours differently. And we're going to do the same thing with both the subject and the message. Now we're ready. Now all we have to do is open our Outlook email with this command. We're going to our Outlook application with this command. We're going to open a specific email with this application. And we're going to say, OK, with this email, what are we going to do? First, we're going to set the to as email. We're going to see if there is an attachment, then attach. Right? We need to check first. If the attachments does not equal 0, then attachments add the attachment. We're going to add the subject the message and I want it displayed. Now there's a good chance you won't use this in the future. You will want to use dot send, right? Because you don't want to see every single email that appears. You're, so when you're ready, when everything looks good, you don't want to see it, just change this to dot send. And it will send that email without ever displaying it. And that's an important difference. And I've put some notes in here, right in here, change to dot send without displaying first. And then end with, that's it. And then we're going to clear check for errors and clear the email out. And that is it. That's all we need to do to create an email based on a contact as soon as we schedule a contact. 
and uh, it's a great feature. Uh, let's go ahead and show you what the, again what that looks like. Simply, uh, let's go ahead and pull this up. You can see more of the screen. Uh, just enter a contact name and automatically an email gets created. Uh, we have a patient intake form attachments. We have our name, uh, welcome, and we have our name again. Thank you for scheduling an appointment with us. Uh, we have our date formatted just the way we want it. We have our time formatted the way we want it. And we look forward, and that's based on that template. So it's a great way to do that. And you'll notice if all we need to do is quickly change uh, a template, uh, let's just say uh, Monday reminder. And if we change that for appointment new, and simply just double clicking will also get us that. And all of a sudden we had a, now we have Monday's um, template. This, we've changed the template. So now it says, I hope you had a great weekend. Thank you for scheduling appointment. So the email is completely different based on that dynamic template. So that's super powerful. All right, next up, let's go into the next feature. We have the ability to send appointment reminders. And this gives us the ability to send us uh, specific reminders uh, for the next day. And I'll show you how we did that through VBA. And basically, the methodology goes like this. Um, I want to look for any appointments for the next day. And if there's no reminder, then send out these appointments. So for example, today is the, the 6th of May. So it's going to look for any appointments that are scheduled on the 7th. And if there's no appointment set, then send it. So for example, if we click appointment reminders right now, nothing is going to happen because they've all been sent. So we just click on there, nothing's gonna happen. However, if we just remove one specific well, last reminder sent for Alex Sampson, we click on the schedule. Alex is scheduled for one o'clock tomorrow, excuse me, for 8.45 for one hour tomorrow. So if we click appointment reminders, it's gonna create an appointment uh, email for Alex Sampson, just like that. And uh, so that's how it's done. And let's go ahead and see in the code exactly what it takes to create that. Back into the VBA model we go. And let's go ahead into the reminders uh, module here. It's called reminder emails. And I've created a macro called appointment reminder email. And now to assign that to the button, I've done a right click, right? And then you click assign macro and we just simply select the uh, appointment reminder email and that's going to uh, attach that macro to this particular shape. So that's how we've done it there. Next up into uh, back into the VBA, we've done the same thing. We've defined a lot of the same uh, variables to create the email. Plus we've done a few others because now I have to create a loop and I want to create an advanced filter. We've gone through advanced filters before, but it's such a powerful uh, part of VBA and Excel that we're going to go over it one more time again. So first again, we want to make sure that uh, we've set the contact names contact. Um, we want to know what the email template row is. And remember, in this case, it's B25, right? In this case, it's B25 because these are the reminder emails. So in this case, uh, we have over here on sheet one, B25, our appointment reminder row is 44. Okay, so that is going to tell us the row for this particular uh, email template, which we're going to use today. So we've gotten the email template row, and we also want to know any attachments based on that row. So it's F and the attachment row. That'll give us the attachments, if any. What I want to do now is I want to run a, an advanced filter. I want to take all these contacts. I want to run an advanced filter. I want to, I want to know all the, the appointments for tomorrow and only the appointments where there's no last reminder sent. So we do that through creating an advanced filter. And I'll show you what that would look like uh, in Excel on a formula, and then we'll go through the VBA. Clicking on advanced filter, we're going to copy to another location, and we're going to use unique record only. And first of all, we need to know the original data which is here e4 through m19 e4 including the headers we always want to include the headers through m19 and we want to use a criteria and here's our criteria here from z to ai and here look look at this i want to know now here's another trick i cannot i cannot just say appointments that equal tomorrow right there are no appointments that are exactly tomorrow because 
there specifically tomorrow plus a time, right? Remember, there's a math, right? So I can't just say equal to 5, 7 because, like, if I do this, um, 5, 7, right? Now, these are formatted, and these are formatted. This is formatted as a date, but remember, they're all formatted as date and time. What if we, what if we format this with a date and time? It's going to show 12 o'clock, right? So that would mean that it's going to be looking for exactly 00, zero or 12 o'clock. There are no, there are no with this exact. So what I want to do is I'm going to say, I want to know dates that are after today but before the 8th. So that means anything in the range of after today or before the 8th. So that's just what I've done here in our advanced filter. After the 6th or and, and before uh, the scheduled appointment uh, before 5 8 so that means anything in between and that's helpful because we need both of those so that means any time on the 7th any time on the 7th it's going to return and the next one is we want to make sure that this is blank and we can use that just a simple equal sign will tell us the blank so if we run that so if I clear one more out let's clear two out right both on the 5 7 right and we run our advanced filter data advanced filter copy to another location unique values and we tab through that and we click OK now we go over here we see two now there's two right because so they're both from the sixth to the eighth they both uh, include the seventh and both of them are blank in the reminder set so that's why they return if I add a date in here only one's going to return so that's how we do that that's how it looks through Excel and I'll show you how we do that through VBA we're gonna run an advanced filter through VBA and we we'll do just that but first what I need to know is I need to define what is the last row in this case it's 19 but it won't always be 19 so we need to use that we need to set the last row contact row as sheet 3 E and then 999 end up this is gonna give us our last row once we have our last row, I also want to make sure we clear any previous results. So that means AA2 to A4. So that means all we're doing here is we're going to say, okay, I want to clear this out and I want to delete anything here. So that I want to clear all that out so that we can put new filters in there because we want to make sure that we don't mix data. We want to make sure everything is clear before we run our filter again. So we do that with just this line of code AA2 through AH2. A4 through 8 so it's the same thing it's going to clear all that data out any previous filters and then what we're going to do is we're going to set our uh, filters remember we need it greater than the sixth well what's the sixth b1 value let's go ahead and take a look at b1 b1 is today right in in sheet one b1 is today okay b1 is today so we need to know what it's going to be after today and if you want to change that, you should change it. You may want to schedule for, for two or three days in advance to send reminders. So you would do that just by changing that. And we also want to say less than, less than um, B1 plus two. So that means two days from today, which would be the eighth. So that means any time. So that's Z2 and AG2. So that's going to put, just like you had seen, it's going to put that information right here, Z2. Uh, which is going to be greater than uh, May 6th, and it's going to put uh, here less than May 8th. So it's going to put those two values, and then the third one is going to put an equal sign here, which means equals blank. So we want to make sure that we return only blank values in the last reminders. Again, the third one is right here. We can get. We don't need this. Okay, blank values only. Okay. So and we can do that simply with an equal sign now we are ready we have our three criteria here three criteria z2 greater than may 6th ag2 less than may 8th and ah2 equal to which is blank values only now we're ready to run our advanced filter and we can do that with just one line of code e4 through m m is our last column in the table the last contact row we're going to run an advanced filter we're going to copy that. We don't want to run the filter in place. We want to copy it to a new range. And we need to use specific criteria defined from Z1 through A12. That criteria 
V1, we must include the headers, and the headers have to be exactly as they are in the original data, all the way to AI2. So this is our criteria right here. And next up, we have our copy to range. And we can just use the top row, and the value should be the same. We're going to copy it to AA3, and we want unique values. That will give us the information that we want for the only the appointments that are scheduled for tomorrow that have not yet been sent out. Now we have our results. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's go ahead and run this and stop it right there. Let's go ahead and clear out any. Okay, it's good. I just like it the way it is. So let's let's run the code up until this point. Okay, now it's run. Now you'll see our results here. Now we have our results. Now I need to know what is the last row of our results. The last row in this case is five, but I need to run something, the last filter row, and get this. Because I want to I want to start at four and I want to continue all the way down until our last row. So I have to define that last row. And we can define that last row right here. Last filter row equals sheet three. AA is the column, nine 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 nine, that's you know the max up. So this will define our last row. And now we're saying if the last row is less than four, then go to no appointment. Basically, what that's going to do is it's going to skip all the way to the end and exit. We could also do uh, then egg, we could also just change this to exit, exit as well. That would be just as easy. Exit. Let's do that. Exit, exit sub. Okay, we can do that just as easily, and then we can get rid of that. Both ways work just fine. Sometimes you want to continue on with other things and then go to is nice because there's additional things that you want to run. But in this case, we're okay with just exiting right then and there. So that's fine. We can do that. So we're up to this point. Now we're going to run a loop, okay, for next loop, for contact row, all the way down to next contact row right here. Let's make that a little bit clearer. Uh, bring it over right here bring it back and then we're going to move it out so that we can clearly see where the loop starts and where it ends so now we're going to ready for our loop and we can reset this our subject we need to we need to know the subject because each time it's going to change for each contact after we replace all those values we need to redefine our subject our subject is the template row plus one our message is the template row plus two right our template row is here, plus one is the subject, plus two is the message. So we certainly need to redefine those. We can define the contact name. Also, we know the contact row, right? We've defined it um, up here. We've already defined it here. Now, the contact row, um, we know we're going to run through. We can use these, right? We're going to use these. We've got all of our contact information right here. So our contact row is going to go four and five. And I'll explain what this is in just a moment, this row. And uh, so we have our contact name. We know it's an AA. We have our contact email. We know it's an AF. And we have our scheduled appointment date and time right here under AG. So we can do that. Now, our email we know is an AF. Our contact name is an AA. So we can define that. Our appointment date is an AG. We've got that. Now, our appointment time is not here. Look, we have we have a date and time together, but I want to extract only the time. I want to extract only the time. How can we do that? Well, we can do that simply by um, subtracting, right? If I know if I know that this is if this is five seven, right? If we've got a date of five seven here, right? And I know that this right is basically five seven plus the time. If I subtract this from this, we're going to get our time watch equals right 5 7 minus right 5 7 without time that's going to get us our time right here 6 15 a.m. you see that if we format it just as a time right it's going to it's going to extract just the time and that's all we need right okay so now it's formatted there we go we can extract our time from the date and time simply by simple subtraction and we've done just that inside the code our appointment time is our date, right? Minus the whole number of date. We could use that. We could use that. 
This is the integer. This pulls the whole number. All I want is the whole number of the appointment, of the date. This will give us our date by adding int. It's going to give us the whole number without any decimals. So when we subtract the date and the time minus just the date, it's going to give us our appointment time. That's how we extract the time. Now we have all of the variables we need to create our email. We're going to use the replace command just as we did in the early emails. And that will go ahead and, and replace all of the contact with the actual variables of the particular contact, the name, the appointment time, and the date. So we've got that covered. Again, all we would need to do is create the Outlook to email if there's an attachment. The rest is the same, the subject, the message go in here, and then nothing. And then all I want to do, and this is the last part that's really important, what I want to do is I want to put the fact that the reminder was sent, right? But we're not using this data, right? We're using this data. So when we're on this line, how do we know the original data? I want to take the original data and I want to put a, if I put it here, if I put the reminder set today, right, that's not going to help us. This is just a filter. This is not the original data, right? I need to, I need to put something in the original data. That's why we use these rows. Now, all this is the formula, row, right? All this tells us row, but when we include this in the advanced filter, when we include it here, we know what row. We know that if we want to put the reminder was sent on this date and this time, right? We know we, it's row 14. So that means all we need to say is, okay, column L, row 14 equals right now, right? Equals now. That is the time and date. We want to put that time in right here. So all we need is that original row number here. So it's an AI. We're going to put it in column L. Whatever's in row AI is where we're going to put it. So that's where we're going to put it. So that is exactly what we do in the VBA code. Sheet 3, range L, that's the L column, and the row. What's the row? The row is here. The row number is AI in the contact row. So we know the row is 14. We know the column is L. So L14 equals now. And that's all we have to do. So that's going to place it so we know the reminder was sent. Now we're just going to loop right back there. And that's how we loop through all the reminder emails. So we have two to send out. And when we click the button there, when we click send appointment emails, we get uh, two emails that are created automatically just like that. That is how that particular code works. Okay, let's go into, although you probably have a pretty good idea by now, let's go into the code on how our tabs work. And it's a really super simple code. And uh, that's done on selection change. We have our email templates here. And just this little bit of code is all we need to create this amazing tab functionality. So let's go ahead. First of all, when we use selection change, what I want is I want to put the column number right here. And I want to put that column. E is 6, F is, excuse me, E is 5, F is 6, 7 is G. Those are the column numbers, right? Equals column, right? Column. And you see that's column 7, right? So template 3. So when we select 3, it's going to put a 7, 6, and 5. So I want that right here into B3. And why do I want it there? Because we're going to use conditional formatting to format this. And I'll show you that under Home and Conditional Formatting. And we're going to manage the rules. Let's go ahead and take a look. And we all want the worksheet. And uh, we don't need, okay, we don't need this. Let's get rid of that. And we'll get rid of that. We're just using one. Okay, so all we, know, all we need is B3 equals column. B3 equals the column. That's all we need. And we're saying if B3 equals the column, format it under light green. Give it this particular format. Uh, don't include the top border, fill it this particular way. So that's it. So if it be three. So now all I need to do is when I click here, I need to say, hey, put the column number here. Put the column number here. We do that through VBA code. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. On a worksheet selection change, uh, we've dimensioned the first row and the last row. We'll take care of that. If uh, that's saying if we make a selection change between E3 or I3, then do something. E3, I3, E3 through I3. If we make a selection change in one of these five, 
then do something. What are we going to do? First, we're going to stop the code. Uh, this makes it faster. All this does is run these two macros. We're going to stop the code with application, disables the events, it disables the calculation, and disables screen updating. That makes it a lot faster. If I don't do that, you're going to see a little bit of a flash. Let's go ahead and disable that so you can see what the difference is. Let's go ahead and comment out stop code. And let's comment out reset code. And that turns it back. You must have both. So now when I click, you're going to see kind of a kind of a flash here, a little bit slower, a little bit of a flash. It's a little bit slower. And the more data you have, the slower it is. So I always like to, you see that little bit of a flash? Um, I always like to run this. If you do use stop code, you must use reset code. You need to re-enable calculations, re-enable uh, updating events, and screen updating in order for the application to function, so it's m important to use reset code. So now when we click it, it's a little bit faster, and you don't see a, kind of a screen flash. So that's really, really helpful. So that is the reason we use stop code and reset code. Next up, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hide some rows. We're going to hide some rows. And what rows do we want to hide? We're going to hide, I want to hide them all. First of all, the first thing I want to do is I want to hide every single row. Let's go ahead and unhide these, okay? First of all, what I want to do is I want to hide row 4 through row 43. I want to hide them all. Actually, it's through 53, but okay, I want to hide. So that's the first thing, hide everything, okay? Then what I want to do, then I want to determine what our first row is. Now, remember that formula we're using that we figured out to the first row? We're going to use that same formula, the target column in this case. Uh, let's, say it's, uh, let's say it's the first one. Let's say we clicked on the first one. The target column is five, right? So we need to get to row. I need to get four. I need to know this is four. When we click on the second one, our target column is six, and I need to get to 14. That's important. We want to get to 14. So let's say our target column is six. Six minus five is one. Okay? Times 10 is 10, plus four is 14. We need that 14. If our target column, if our if we've collected the second, excuse me, the third one, our target column is seven, right? And we need to get to twenty-four. We need to know that first row. So seven minus five is two times ten is twenty plus four. That gives us twenty-four. So this will help us determine the first row. Now we know that we've uh, our last row is always going to be. It's always going to be a nine rows or ten rows. It's always going to be those ten. So all we need to do to get to the last row is add nine. To get to the last row is the first row plus nine. Now all we need to do is take our first row and take our last row as a range and then and then entire row hidden false. So that's going to show. So basically it's going to take our first row, it's going to take our last row, and unhide just those particular ones. That is how we do that. And next, for our conditional formatting to work properly, we need to take that column, whatever column, and put it in B3. So we've done that right here in B3. Our target column here is B3. So that's all we did. It's super, 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 super simple uh, to create this awesome little tabs feature. And you can, you can uh, create a, a, almost an unlimited amount of tabs very simply. And it's a really cool feature. This on its own is, is worthwhile of a, of a video training, but uh, I wanted to include it in today's training for as a bonus. The, the, last, the last feature that I wanted to show you that I've added in is the ability to have appointment colors uh, change when they're in the past. Okay? Now, as of recording this video, it is now 5 o'clock p.m., right? So it's 5.05 p.m. So that means that uh, anything after 4, you'll see this now changed to gray because it's after 5 o'clock. So anything in the past is going to be in gray. Now gray, let's go ahead and take a look at that. What color is gray? And gray it has a, a color to it, so we've assigned it. Let's just say I put in gray here. And I think I've used uh, this particular color here, the second gray down, and that is an AB9, AB9. So if we create a little bit of a, a sub test color, okay, and we do message box uh, sheet one range AB9 dot interior color, right? Color. I want to know what the color is, right? So all I need to do is run that macro. 
run that right here and it's going to tell us that color is 1427708114277081. 1427708114277081. Okay, great. Now we know the color. So, now I know what color to change it to. Let's go back to uh, the schedule uh, which we ran over last time, schedule max. And this is what's going to do is going to color our schedule. And we went over this macro and I've only added a little bit in here. And I've added right here this statement. Previously, all we had was this statement here. What we're going to do is we're going to color the cells, color the range based on whatever the fill color is. So previously, all we did was based on whatever fill color this is, fill all of the cells here. But now we have an if then statement we're adding into. And basically, what I want to say is if this time plus this date is in the past, color it gray. If it's in the future, color it whatever, whatever color we've set here. So that's all we're going to do with this if then statement. So here again, if the row for week call minus one plus the time is greater than now, then color it normal color. So again, for if the date plus the time, the this date plus this time is greater than now, then color it green. If it's not, then color it gray. So we've done that here. If the date, row four, week column minus one, plus the row, plus the week column minus one, this gives us our time. This gives us our time, right? This gives us our date. So we're adding those two together, and we're saying if it's greater than or equal to now, then color it whatever for. Otherwise, color that range one four two seven seven zero that's the same grade that we just had so that's all we're doing there and that allows us so if we go into the past week we're going to see everything colored in gray because it's all in the past and if we go into the future we're going to see everything colored into the green there's no appointments there but any appointments we do schedule will automatically be in green I don't want an email to appear. We've seen enough of emails. So everything's going to appear in green automatically in the future. Everything's going to appear gray. Today's and automatically orange is the current day. So that's great. So that is exactly how we color different cells based on the past. So I thought that might be very helpful. So I wanted to include that as well. To summarize, we've shown you four really cool features today. We've shown you the ability to create multiple email templates and send those email templates based on either new appointments or appointment reminders. We've shown you the ability to, to create tabs section based on single selection and conditional formatting with cells. We have shown you how to color particular cells based on the past or the present, so that's great. And we have also shown you the ability, an advanced filter based on multiple conditions. All right, I hope you have liked this training. Uh, also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and you will get alerts right away uh, when I have new videos out, which will be every Tuesday. So I do appreciate all of your likes and share, whether you're on Facebook or whether you're on YouTube. You can always download the workbook. It is free. Just check for the links in the description. I really appreciate your time and thank you always uh, for your support and comments. They're really great. Thanks again.